You want to support Roller March Unfiltered? Be sure to join our Bring the Funk fan club. Every dollar that you give to us supports our daily digital show. There's only one daily digital show out here that keeps it black and keep it real as Roller Martin Unfiltered. Support the Roller Martin Unfiltered daily digital show by going to RollerMartinUnfiltered.com. You can make this possible. All right, folks, ABC News did a poll where 72% of Americans say that they absolutely are in favor of stay-at-home orders and believe that if we move too quickly to get back to normal, we'll present a greater threat to our country. 86% think that social distancing and shelter-in-place orders are responsible policies. If restrictions were lifted immediately, about 80% of Americans say they will be more than likely to continue to avoid public places that draw crowds. I want to bring in my panel right now, Dr. Niambe Carter. She is the Department of Political Science at Howard University. Also joining us is Rob Richardson, host of the Disruption Now podcast, and Amisha Cross, political analyst and Democratic strategist. All right, to all of you, I'm telling you right now, point blank, uh, I, I'm, with, I'm with the 72 to 80%. I don't give a damn. I live in Virginia. I don't care what the governor of Virginia do. My family's in Texas. The hell with Greg Abbott. Look, we are not sitting here playing games with this. We're going to let all these other people, all these other fools go out there, get themselves sick, go to the hospital. That's all right. They can keep that. Like, there's nothing I need. There's nothing I need to do out there. If I can't do it from home, then it doesn't get done. Uh, quite frankly, this is reckless. It's foolish. Um, and I don't know what the point is of opening your state if you kill half the population um, that are going to be your consumers and your workers. I mean, I think this is um, nonsense. And I think when you look at some of these states and you look at the racial breakdowns in these states and they've made, you know, some assessments of where most of these COVID outbreaks are happening, it's no surprise they're happening in many black communities, in less well-resourced communities. And they say, well, this doesn't apply to me, so open the state back up. You know, if a few more of these people are gone, then, you know, that's no big deal. And I think people are right to be leery of any state motivation that is saying to do something in contradistinction to what the public health community is saying. I think everybody should stay home until further notice because we're not even at the peak of this thing yet. Amisha and Rob. Yeah, I'll also I, I, say I agree was, with Dr. Carter here. Ahead. I think that we're we're in a stage where it is extremely important to stay home. We definitely don't have enough tests. We still don't have the antibody test just yet. And we don't have a real way of knowing how many people are walking around asymptomatic who could pass this uh, this virus on to someone else and create some real problems. Secondarily, with as much as we argue for folks to stay at home, I'm also extremely worried about the, the essential workers, which are largely black and brown people, lower income, underprivileged groups who are still out here working in your grocery stores at various takeout restaurants, driving your Ubers, and they still don't have the PPE equipment necessary to do their job without essentially passing this thing on or having some real issues that they're going to take back home to their own families. I, I definitely don't think that it's time to open up any state, not just Georgia, any state in America, to regular traffic again, because we just, it's not a safe time. We're not ready for that. Yeah, yeah, and, and I mean, I, I actually right. agree with the panel, and I'll just say that it was great to have, uh, you know, Dr. Hilton on, but you didn't need to have an MD to, to actually re to talk about what this stupid ass president just is telling people to do to actually follow that advice. But I just say, we know we have a dumb, foolish president in office, but to quote Star Wars, who's more of the fool, the fool or the fools that follow the fool? So we got people like Fox News, we have Trump apologists out here reinforcing this or trying to justify this craziness. Uh, and, and that's what worries me. So look, we need to make sure people understand, you know, you can listen to nothing that anybody or any anybody that still is supporting this president I don't know what this is about. Do you like your tax cut that much? Do you? Well, I, I don't. I don't understand. I, I just don't get this. Well, I, I think I think what you're dealing with again. Let's just cut to the chase. Donald Trump desperately needs aggrieved white people to be mad and angry. That's what he Absolutely. needs. More so, when you start looking at the data here, Joe Biden is killing him among older voters. Trump is pissing off older voters, uh, and so. He needs this. He needs this anger, this resentment. And he needs these protests because he knows that's the only way he can win in November by rallying up angry white folks. 
Especially and those Republicans those have every right to be upset. Trump educated. was willing to risk their lives. He was willing to say, okay, well, we can risk hundreds of thousands of older people because the younger people are basically the ones who are the means of production in this country. It's extremely sickening. He actually said that if, you know, if we sacrificed them, if they went out, um, that, that would be fine. Like, he did not care about older people in this country, which is extremely ironic because the majority of old white people is the Republican Party. They are the Fox News viewers. If you get rid of all of these people by virus or otherwise, who is left to vote for you? And Trump don't care about but nobody. I, Listen, well, listen I, he, I, threw, he, threw, he threw Governor uh, Kemp under the bus. He would throw his own mama under the bus if it made him look mm -hmm. good. He does not care about anything or anybody. But you know, but the thing about it is these people are happy if they think all the costs accrue to people of color, right? Correct. They think if all the other people get sick and all the other people die, then it's okay. And I think that's the, the part about um, this sort of drumbeat of, of white male in particular, but just white victimization, right? Is that if you keep telling people it's somebody else and that it's those people over there, and it's those people coming in here, and it's these illegitimate people, right, these bad black people, these, these, these bad hombres, right, coming over the border, you can pick their pockets all day long. And that's what, exactly what he's doing. And he keeps telling them that they are hurting. He keeps telling them that it's other people's fault. Forget that he mismanaged the economy, right? Forget that he is the one who sat on his laurels for months, knowing this thing was coming our way and did nothing. Right. But it's all those other people. Right. This is why he's now going to these immigration bans and all of this stuff, because if he can keep pushing yep. the buck, right, and placing yep. the blame on black and brown people, then he can let these these white folks who are getting just as sick. Right. Who are also um, going to be finding themselves confronting this thing. He can make them believe that it was all this other these other people's fault. And that's exactly what he's going to do all the way until November. I got a new one for y'all. So Jonathan Swan is uh, is um, he tweeted sent out about 36 minutes ago uh, that President Trump plans to pare back his coronavirus press conferences, according to four sources familiar with the internal deliberations. As soon as next week, he may stop appearing daily and make shorter appearances when he does. The sources said uh, they claim that. Uh, that, first of all, the, the sources uh, say it finally seems to have dawned on Trump that these briefings aren't helping him. Uh, <laughs> and they say that this was coming up before his disinfectant comment. Nah, I think, here's the deal. He was riding this deal. These, this, this news conference, these, these were his rallies. This is an opportunity for him to do what he was doing. Nah, nah, nah. The poll numbers are dropping because he is so dumb. And everybody, is, I love, and where are all the liberals who were saying, well, Joe Biden, Joe Biden, you got me out every day. This was Joe Biden. Now I'm cool. Let him keep talking. Mm -hmm. well, he's Go ahead and keep talking. Poll numbers <laughs> came out showing Biden is up in Florida, up in Michigan, up in Pennsylvania, up in Wisconsin. And so Joe Biden, I, I kept telling everybody, no, there was no reason for Joe Biden to be stepping out there holding daily briefings because he had nothing new to say. If somebody is, it, like, what does they say? Give somebody enough rope to hang themselves. And Donald mm -hmm. Trump, that's exactly what he's been doing. So this is no shock all of a sudden he wants to pull back. Well, this is his, it's, it's his job. He's the president right now. And I think Joe Biden is exactly right. Don't give him your ideas, right? Don't do his work for him for free. I mean, this isn't, you know, I know people think about the campaign, but this is all COVID all the time. So I think it will be a waste of energy for Joe Biden. But let Donald Trump do his job. He's supposed to be the president. Then he should be doing his job as the president. And I think Joe Biden did exactly what he should have done. Because let's be clear, he wouldn't have been able to suck a lot of the oxygen out of the room anyway. I'm still baffled why any of these networks are, are carrying this thing live every day. Because it's ridiculous at this point. Um, but they do. Hey, and so I, Joe Biden... I, 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 I say, Amisha, if these fools want to keep... Amisha, and if you want to keep screwing themselves, they should start singing Please Don't Go by Casey and the Sunshine Band. <laughs> Because if he's going to start saying, hey, inject yourself with disinfectant, oh, doc, let's just go ahead and let the crazy continue so your poll numbers can keep dropping to guarantee we bounce your ass in November. <laughs>
<laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> these these daily briefings have done nothing to help President Trump. In the beginning, there was a slight uptick, and we saw that just because there was the rally around the flag initiative that technically Americans typically do when there is any type of disaster. And that quickly dissipated within a week, a week and a half of him actually going live and doing these things every day. What Trump has done essentially was to try to attempt to use these as national campaign rallies, pseudo rallies for his base. And he has been ripped to shreds by making false claim after false claim, telling people about drugs that don't actually help, telling people about Clorox and, <laughs> and all these other things. And it just seems ridiculous. He's tried to play pseudo doctor on television and he's embarrassed himself and showcased just how poor his leadership quality actually is. Now people are dying. And we have an economy, the Trump economy, that was supposed to be the magic economy and the glory days of America is shot to hell. We are now in the face of a depression that is greater than what we saw in 2008. He wanted to be to beat President Obama so bad. Now let's see him try to create a recovery effort that can actually get people back to work. Because even if everything opened up tomorrow, we still have hundreds of thousands of jobs across every state in this country that are simply not coming back. Where is Donald Trump's plan for that? Yep. And, and a crisis you know, Rob, usually helps. I was sitting here. How, how, Rob, Rob, I was sitting here. And I was just trying to imagine what that discussion looked like in the Oval Office after he went out there and talked about disinfectants and the sunlight on the inside of the body and coming out through the skin. I couldn't help think this probably how the conversation went. Yeah. You know you messed up. <laughs> So why don't you just, why, why, you know, you just, why don't you, 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 just, just sit your ass down. Just sit down. <laughs> but here's the deal. I, I, the reason, reason I don't mind the crazy, because I think every day this fool talks, Rob, every day this fool talks, he actually makes it worse. And that's fine with me. Just like Mitch McConnell, Republicans are blasting him after he said, yeah, yeah y'all can go bankrupt. Peter King of New York went off on him. So the crazy, I think people are seeing, and, and Joe Biden, if by coming across as, I'm just calm, and they're nuts, helps him moving towards November. Well, that's all you need right now. And, you know, a crisis normally helps a president, a normal president. We don't have a normal president. We have whatever you call that in the White House. So he, he's doing what has worked for him. Uh, it won't work this time because people are dying. I mean, they can't they can't spin these facts anymore. They can't spin the fact that he called it a hoax, and now we're up to like 50,000 deaths. And in some counties, it's the leading cause of death in the United States in some areas. And so you can't you can't make those facts up. No matter no matter how much Laura Ingram or anybody else tries to point to somebody else, you only got one person to point to: the fool you guys put in the White House, y'all president, not mine. <laughs> I don't even call him president. Let's just be real yeah, clear. I'm I don't sorry. even call I, him I made president. A mistake. I usually call him the uh, president uh, occupant uh, White House. Thank you for correcting me. No, mm -mm, I don't do that. Because first of all, I said if you don't respect the office of the president, I'm not going to show you any kind of respect whatsoever. And that's what he simply has not done. All right. Every single night, we've got some of the top black experts. You're not going to see them on cable news or broadcast news because you swear black people aren't experts when it comes to this health crisis. That's why we have this show and why we do what we do every day on Roland Martin Unfiltered. Joining us right now is retired General Russell Honoré. Uh, thanks to his first black surgeon general, Dr. Jocelyn Elders. John Hope Bryan, he is the founder of Operation Hope. Senator Kamala Harris of California. Dr. Sadrina Calder, retired General Lloyd Austin. Congresswoman Karen Bass, Commissioner Omari Hardick. Bureau President in Brooklyn, Eric Adams. Dr. Joseph Graves, America's Wealth Coach, Deborah Owens. Dr. Corey A. Bear, Patel Salt. Uh, Howard University student, Pastor Jamal Bryant, a uh, doctor, uh, Christy McDowell, Benja Ajilore, senior economist at the Center for American Progress, Gilda Daniels, again, author of the book, The Crisis of Voter Suppression in America. Four stars, uh, General Kit Ward, Dr. Oliver Brooks, is president of the National Medical Association, president of the American Medical Association, Dr. 
Patrice Harris, Joby Benjamin, Dr. Alexia Gaffney, infectious disease specialist, Dr. George is Benjamin, uh, executive director of the American, American Public Health Association, Malcolm Nance, family medicine physician, Dr. Jen Caudle, Dr. Tashaka Cunningham, a molecular biologist, Kat Stafford, she's a national race and ethnicity reporter for the Associated Press. Dr. Wayne A.I. Frederick, uh, who is the president of Howard University, Congresswoman Yvette Clark uh, from the state of New York, William Spring, AFL-CIO economist, uh, Andrea James, executive director of the National Council for Incarcerated and Formerly Incarcerated Women and Girls. All right, let's go to Capitol Hill. Congressman Gregory Meeks, Congresswoman Edith Johnson of Texas, Congresswoman Barbara Lee, Minnesota Senator Amy Klobuchar, mental health clinician, Jamie Singletary, Prince George's County State Attorney, Aisha Brayboy, as well as Dylan uh, Harry, ACLU Justice Division strategist. Uh, Dr. Cindy Duke, uh, she is a virologist, Principal Steve Perry of Capitol Prep. Health and wellness specialist, Dr. Yolandra Hancock, Desmond Mead, President of the Florida Rights Restoration Coalition, Cliff Albright, who is the co-founder of Black Voters Matter, Michael Harriet with the group, the Mina McWhorter, founder of Love by the Hand of Dr. Julian Malvo, economist president, Emerita Bennett College, coroner Michael Fowler, is a mayor of Atlanta, Keisha Lance Bottoms, mental health therapist, Suzette Clark, Justin Gibney, attorney and political strategist, and Bishop Vincent Matthews Jr., Dr. Suzette McKinney, CEO and executive director of the Illinois Medical District, Dr. Leon Madugal, president-elect of the National Medical Association, Jana Bailey, Mayor of Moss Point, uh, Mississippi, uh, Mario King. We're going to keep driving this thing to make sure our people are fully aware, safe, protected from coronavirus. You're getting the top medical experts, the top business experts, top political experts, top religious experts, because that's why we do what we do, unapologetically and unfiltered. Ain't nobody else in the black media space doing what we do. Watch Roland Martin Unfiltered daily at 6 p.m. Eastern on YouTube, Facebook, or Periscope, or go to RolandMartinUnfiltered.com. Support the Roland Martin Unfiltered Daily Digital Show by going to RolandMartinUnfiltered.com. Our goal is to get 20,000 of our fans contributing 50 bucks each for the whole year. You can make this possible. RolandMartinUnfiltered.com.